speaking to the church in Colossae and he was encouraging Archippus, his son in the gospel. He said, say unto Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Very instructive statement. Take heed means be discerning. Take heed means don't be careless. Take heed means place value on it to the ministry. Number two, he says you did not receive it from a man. You may have been given an earthly appointment or maybe a branch to pastor or whatever it is, but he says this ministry you received. He never said you received from the Lord. He said you received in the Lord, meaning it would have been a derivative of your relationship with God. It was whilst you were loving and serving and living and pressing into God that that ministry came. He says that thou fulfill it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to define a few terminologies, three or four of them. And I have watched people misuse these terminologies even to their detriment. Number one is the gospel what exactly is the gospel we're discussing ministry but we have to look at the gospel i'm just giving definitions romans 1 16 says for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he calls it the power of god unto salvation and that the influence is over everyone that believes to the jews first and then to the greek i am not ashamed of the gospel that means if your gospel brings shame there is something you do not understand about it because the gospel should not produce shame it contains within it the power of God that leads to salvation what exactly is the gospel now the word gospel from its original Greek origin means good news a declaration of a news that produces glad tidings are we together now and there are many dimensions to the gospel in fact there are seven of them but for the purpose of our discussion every time I talk about it I always emphasize the first and the seventh the first is called the gospel of salvation the seventh of them is called the gospel of the kingdom you cannot be effective in ministry if you do not understand these two dimensions of the gospel so the gospel merely means a declaration of glad tidings the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ his son mankind being the zenith the object the principal recipient of that love but then it extends also to creation follow carefully that the gospel is a revelation or a communication of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ mankind being the principal recipient that if and when we believe in that gospel the Bible says whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting that is the gospel the message of the gospel but there is the gospel as an ideology that transforms you can have the message of the gospel the jurisdiction of that message is personal salvation that means another person cannot be saved by your personal believing but there is the ideology of the gospel it is a mind control system that seeks to institutionalize God consciousness within a territory are we together so if all you know is the evangelical dimension of the gospel understanding the message that saves you can be saved like you have heard me say but your territory will not be safe an example was Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah Lot was not a rebel he had encountered the God of heaven but because he was in a territory that had not received the God of heaven, he was still a victim of the territory. He was even going to give his two young virgin ladies because there was a perverse territory that would not honor God. 
so it is not enough to embrace the message you must insist that your territory comes under the influence of the mind control system of the gospel hallelujah generally speaking when you are when you want to capture men and territories there are four things that you capture every antichrist system that has been built in history and is now currently at work on earth seeks to gain these four things psalm 24 verse 1 the earth number one number two the resources we call it the fullness number three the systems the mind control structure and number four the inhabitants whoever takes control of the earth the physical landmass there is a dimension of faith that is territorial and is land the earth the fullness there means the resources the economy number three the mind control systems and number four the inhabitants are we together that's just for you to understand so we're defining terminologies because so many people say i am a preacher of the gospel for the fivefold ministry or i am a man of god that believes in the gospel and most people do not understand that this gospel is dimensional so all, most people mean it to say i am one who has been mandated by jesus christ to proclaim the message that saves so the businessman will say i have no business understanding and communicating the gospel the politician will say, I have no business understanding and communicating the gospel because all they think there is to the gospel is the message that saves. Preachers are the principal communicators of the message that saves. But kingdom ambassadors and witnesses are the principal communicators of the ideology that transforms. Are you getting it now? So when we teach about the gospel, you find out that most people who are not in the fivefold ministry just shut down. They say, it's not my business. When you start talking about money or talking about politics, now you are speaking my language. But the gospel is to everyone. To the preachers, the message that saves. To non-preachers, if you would want me to use that expression, the ideology that transforms. Everybody must embrace the gospel. Do we have that clear? Number two, kingdom advancement i'm just redefining terminologies what exactly is kingdom advancement every time we collect offerings we pray and we say father let this money be used for your glory and yet that money goes into a room we never see the money evaporate to the sky and enter heaven and yet we say lord let this be used for the advancement of your kingdom and yet it is physical people who use the money the money is counted what exactly does it mean to advance the kingdom if you do not understand kingdom advancement you are not even in ministry hallelujah what exactly is kingdom advance let me define it for you that kingdom advance refers to the deploying of every and any scriptural means listen carefully kingdom advance is the deploying of every and any scriptural means that leads to the revelation of Jesus and the enthroning of the same every and any scriptural means that will lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ and his purposes first across the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities that is kingdom advance so when you say you are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which you deploy through your life through your skill every and any scriptural means that will lead to the revelation of jesus and will lead to the enthroning of him and his purposes across the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities why am i defining this because of the next definition we are going to define what ministry is and most people who say i am in ministry believe me they do not know what they are saying and if this definition is wrong your entire pursuit to be wrong if you're on your way traveling say to ibadan 
are we together kingdom advance means deploying every and any scriptural means that will lead to the revelation of jesus and the enthroning of the same first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities now let's define ministry are we learning this morning what does it mean to be in ministry what is ministry for some you will say preaching for our dear people they may say singing other people can say whatever it is but what exactly it is ministry please look up let me tell you what ministry is not ministry is not preaching no ministry has nothing to do with a pulpit ministry has nothing to do with a church ministry has nothing to do with membership ministry has nothing to do with a mic ministry has nothing to do with most of the things we call ministry look up please when the pandemic caused churches to be shut for three months there were people who were utterly frustrated their definition of ministry frustrated them because their idea of ministry is that there must be a pulpit in front of you there must be a congregation listening to what you are saying there must be a mic amplifying your voice and there must be a structure around those things are not necessarily the definition of ministry listen to me carefully the essence of ministry is not doing it's not standing in front of a people no what makes ministry ministry is not the activity listen carefully activity does not make ministry ministry there are two conditions for anything to be called ministry number one it must be motivated by your love for jesus christ number two it must lead to the revelation and the enthroning of jesus that is it let me repeat myself for anything to be called ministry the necessary and sufficient conditions is that number one it must be motivated by a passion and a desire a love for jesus christ and number two the goal of that entire activity must be to see jesus glorified that means i can be a preacher a very good preacher and yet not be a minister if my motivation is not my love for jesus christ and if my intent and goal is to not see him lifted and glorified i am not in ministry even though singing are you seeing that by this definition many people are not in ministry many people are singers or worshipers many people are whatever it is but they are not ministers so it is not the activity that qualifies it to be called ministry it's not the religiosity of the setting a pulpit is not what makes it ministry a mic is not what makes it ministry a church building is not what makes it ministry the motivation and the goal is what makes it ministry now watch this who, who dropped this here just very quickly where is who is the okay now watch this let me use any gentleman come anyone at all or protocol any one of the protocol people come my friend i want you to carry this drop it here for me who among two of us is a minister Who did you clap for when he came up stage? <laughs> did you clap for this man? Because he's not a minister, isn't it? Hold on. This is the one who is a minister because there was some introduction there and he came up majestically ready to preach. You see, whether I'm a minister or he's a minister cannot be tested by what we're doing. We will have to vet the motivation. If this guy if he's bringing this water to drop for me is motivated by his love for jesus and is to assist me preach well to the end that lives be blessed 
in the mind of God, this is exactly the same thing as a Reinhard Bonke crusade. Are you getting this now? So, question Was Mary a minister? What was her ministry? Was Elizabeth in ministry? You mean pregnancy was her ministry? Can pregnancy be ministry? What qualifies pregnancy to be ministry? So is a businessman a minister? What qualifies his business to be ministry? Is a politician a minister? What qualifies his politics to be ministry? This man who came and sang here, is he a minister? What qualified him? Learn this. Because when God says ministers, he does not say preachers. He means all who are motivated by their love for Jesus and will engage in scriptural activities that ultimately lead to the revelation of the Christ. Can marriage be ministry? Can education be ministry? Can looking for money be ministry? Do you know why I'm teaching you this? If we don't redefine ourselves in the next 10 years, the church will be in trouble. There are people who have no business holding a mic and standing on stage here but because they know that they are in ministry and since the definition given to them is the only condition for you to be a minister is to have a church have a pulpit have a bible and be called apostle or prophet many business people are holding mics and struggling and suffering because the grace for this pulpit dimension of it was not given to them and they they want to ease the guilt of not running away from the call of God so they throw away every other thing that is ministry and come here to do religiosity and they call it ministry say unto Archippus take heed to the ministry that you have received in the Lord that thou fulfill it is God speaking to us now? Probably some of you are about to make that mistake right now. You are about to throw away every precious thing. And you see, some of these problems come from we preachers. Because we have sold a template about ministry. That if ever you are to be called of God, this is the roadmap to follow. If you ultimately do not end up in a pulpit being a pastor of a church, you may not be in ministry. If you are talking about the fivefold, that is fine. Is someone learning already? That means if you take away this pulpit from me, am I still in ministry? If you take away preaching from me, am I still in ministry? If you take away congregation from me, am I still in ministry? Now you know what ministry is. Are you in ministry? When you came this morning, did you come to support the ministers or you came as a minister? Are we together? Mary's only assignment as revealed from the Bible is getting pregnant and giving birth to Jesus safely. And yet the Bible is very lavish about recognizing it. There was a woman who regardless the way she messed up her life she broke a jar of alabaster box of pure spikenard and jesus said you better do not judge this woman by her activity look at the motivation that everywhere i am talked about this woman will be remembered hallelujah so would you call anna the prophetess a minister did she preach to anybody that you saw did she heal anybody that you saw but she sat there sacrificing 60 years of her family life to pray down Jesus from heaven to earth. And the Bible was not careful to ignore her. 
or to recognize her the bible was very lavish to say there was such a woman as this so now that we have this definition let me talk about one more thing the concept of stewardship one of the reasons why many people cannot be trusted with so much in the kingdom is because they have what we call an ownership mentality now in this kingdom you may have heard me say it that in this kingdom owners are rebels of course when you say owner in terms of human responsibility you are right but from the lens of the way God deals with men you never see God giving men ownership he gives men stewardship from the garden you may freely eat but it is not your own stewardship means you are a caretaker you are mandated to take care of it can I tell you the source of high blood pressure the source of most of these troubles you see including preachers now you understand what I'm saying most people who are depressing themselves today is because of an ownership mentality the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership stewardship means I am trusted with this ownership means I want it in my name and when you have it in your name you are responsible for the maintenance the prodigal son had no business with lack provided the resources was in his father's name but he wanted it in his name the moment ownership came lack came deterioration came until he ended up with the swine when jesus walked upon the earth he never called himself owner or father he called himself son it is my church it is my members of course I, I, you understand what we are trying to say right there are people who say that to mean in terms of responsibility so don't misunderstand what i'm saying but ownership mentality is what has destroyed people a man can receive nothing except it is given to him are we together now you see the call to faithfulness is useless when you are owner the call to faithfulness is only needed when you are steward because there is someone who supervises and would vet and would check you if i own something no matter what i do with it it shouldn't be your business is that true for instance i can decide to buy a bottle of water and pour it on my head you have no right to say what are you doing because in quote i use my money i bought my bottle of water and i can even decide to tear it into two and just play around with it and throw the bottle down but if you gave me and you said i'm trusting you with this there will be no misuse because i am aware that it is not my own i have access to it look at this when a landlord gives you when he gives you access to be a tenant in his house the landlord even though it is his house he does not have a right to come and bump into that house is that true however you are forced to manage that house because you know that there are terms and agreement and a time can come when the landlord will come to vet and say no 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 you've spoiled my bob you've spoiled the ceiling you've spoiled all of these things in many tenancy agreements when something goes wrong with the physical structure who is responsible for it you see that he may charge you but you will take responsibility to bring in electricians who fix it i can tell you the reason why there is a lot of recklessness in ministry is because most people believe it is my ministry first corinthians 4 verse 1 and 2 i need to bring to us a stewardship mentality this is what will bring discipline and decorum and seriousness and accountability first corinthians 4 let's hurry up please verse 1 and 2 it says let a man so account of us do i quote it stewards okay beautiful we have it here verse 1 please let's go back to verse 1 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god you know what a steward is a caretaker verse 2 it says moreover 
it is required if it is true that you are a steward it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful say i will be faithful faithful with the money god gave you faithful with the wisdom he gave you faithful with the beautiful voice like my dear friend here who came to sing faithful with everything god gave you when people are reckless and arrogant and act as if they are the god of themselves it is because they do not know that they were given this it was the misc of nebuchadnezzar until he was turned to an animal for seven years and when nebuchadnezzar repented and came back his testimony was that he acknowledged that there was a god above that rules over the affairs of men i will tell you the reason why ministry is stressing a lot of people they have not allowed the owner to be owner they have not allowed the owner to be owner the earth is the lord's the fullness there of the walls and they that dwell therein we are stewards when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent thee are we understanding this now the next thing i want to talk about very quickly are you learning i want to share with us our corporate mandate as believers if all i do is just to bring these definitions and clear up these perspectives because most of the mistakes in ministry is because of a definition we have inherited or we have received that is pungent to kingdom come there are two scriptures that clearly reveal the mandate of the believer that means regardless our individual assignments in the fivefold business corporate world we have a universal mandate as believers two scriptures never forget this for the rest of your life John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7 John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7 please help us media John chapter 1 okay it says here there was a man sent from God where did he come from sent from God that means you only pass through the womb of your mother but you were sent from God John 1 verse 6 there was a man sent from God everybody say I was sent from God say it with understanding I was sent from God I don't care the biological activities that are around how you arrived sent from God through the womb of a woman sent from God through the Yoruba territory sent from God through the Igbo or South South territory sent from God through the Northern Territory you are not a Northerner you are not a Southerner you are not an Eastern and you are sent from God and you pass through that territory so the greater part of your consciousness should be where you came from not where you are passing through are we together there was a man sent from God when he arrived the earth they gave him a name they called him John verse 7 why did he come the same came for a witness the same came for what is it ever written here that he came to be a prophet so why do you call him a baptist and a prophet the bible says he came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe this is our corporate mandate there was a man sent from god when he arrived the earth they called him joshua selman and the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through his witness in the area of the fivefold men might believe there is a man sent from god who came as whatever it is when he arrived the earth they named him whatever name they gave him he came as a witness to the light that all men through the business and finance being the geography of his witness that ultimately men might believe you do not define yourself by the geography of your witness you define yourself by this corporate mandate say i am a witness 
a witness has the singular assignment of validating a claim a witness is not necessary until there is a contention over a claim satan is there proving that jesus is not lord and forcing nations to disbelieve in jesus and he sent you in business he sent you in ministry he sent you in politics he sent you in the fivefold what you call the pulpit ministry sent you as an evangelist a prophet a pastor an apostle all together the corporate mandate is the same we have people in this church working in the worship team working in the media working in the protocol they are more conscious about the goal of the church than the geography of their assignment is that true the protocol is motivated by the same motivation the media person is motivated by the welfare all motivated by the same motivation to ultimately see that God's purposes as committed to the man of God is effectively executed when a businessman starts thinking like a pastor and a pastor starts thinking like a businessman when a politician starts thinking like a man of God and a man of God starts thinking there is the sharing of that understanding because they are ultimately motivated by the same goal that all men through him might believe Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you it says there again Jesus is speaking that you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth say I am a witness the geography what you call your assignment is simply the geography of your witness if you are a man of God you are a witness using the pulpit as a platform if you are a businessman you are a witness using commerce and business and real estate and whatever it is as a platform if you are a politician you are a witness using the platform of politics and governance and the parliament as a platform are we together now if you are an academician for instance you are using the platform of academics very very important because many people you see please look up let me have your attention many people do not understand that being a witness is greater than the geography of the witness so you say i am a businessman you are right to the layman i am a preacher you are right to the layman i am a politician you are right to the layman but from a kingdom perspective you are none of these things you are a witness in politics you are a witness in governance you are a witness as a preacher are we together now you are a witness as a family man a father a mother you are a witness as whoever and whatever so your witness the consciousness of you being a validator and a defender of the claims of God is greater than the geography if you are with me say amen, amen. somebody shout I am a witness if you understand that you are not just a businessman but a witness as a businessman what you will do with that money will be different from someone who is just a businessman if you understand that you are not just a preacher you are a witness using the platform of preaching the way you will preach will be different the carelessness and the recklessness that happens around sadly around ministry business politics is because people do not understand that they are witnesses a witness is a validator that means everything you say everything you do is supposed to be proving the reality of the lordship of jesus christ is someone learning this morning hallelujah let's look at the scripture that i believe will bless you and then we'll find somewhere to tie it down for this discussion this morning the heart condition of a minister now when I say minister I mean first the fivefold ministers and then it extends to kingdom ambassadors where all ministers you understand what I'm saying now right 
there is a heart requirement listen very carefully God does not just use people carelessly there is a heart condition and a heart requirement that God looks for and let me tell you this if God does not find that you will never never truly be used mightily by God most people have missed out on the opportunity to be greatly used by God because of their heart condition Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 Proverbs 23 and verse 26 very quickly please let's look at it Proverbs 23 and verse 26 if you see it projected can you see it there please read with me let's read together one to read my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way please look up the first requirement is the correction and the surrender of your heart can I tell you everything you do that is right or wrong stems from your heart condition you may have heard me say it in my teachings you can fast all you want to fast you can pray all you want to pray you can do every kind of night vigil or spiritual exercise you want that the only thing that gives your spiritual exercise is credence is the state of your heart please say the state of my heart the state of your heart vetoes your fasting the state of your heart vetoes your prayer the state of your heart vetoes your word study the state of your heart vetoes your good communication many people have every other thing in place but the state of their heart the motivation behind your heart the things that you do can i tell you allow god in the next one minute to do a surgery in your heart there are people who got into ministry fivefold today simply because they heard that when a man preaches they give him honorarium and they feel instead of getting a job that i'll be collecting 40 40 000, when will i gather enough to build a house let me quietly go to the vineyard that corrupted motif so after three years when it looks like it's not happening it will be easy to receive power from the devil because your motivation was never to see jesus glorified there are others who their motivation for getting into ministry is because someone looked down on them and said you will never be great and he said i will never be great you will see and they went to answer the call other people got they submitted their job with nmpc civil defense you know all of this place and i'm not being sarcastic they didn't seem to get jobs and they say instead of wasting away at least let me be a pastor i know that there will be one member who believes in me enough to sow into my life off they go other people are in ministry just because they just feel like i love god too much and what will i do with this this amount of love i have for god i can't waste it away business is too small to express that love so let me get to ministry your the state of your heart is what gives you the staying power in ministry if the state of your heart was corrupt from beginning no matter what activity you are involved with believe me you will end up being frustrated is god speaking to someone in my experience and and many of you may have heard me say that my desire was never to be a man of god to be a preacher no no i just loved jesus with my all and sincerely in whatever capacity he wanted me to serve i would be grateful more than grateful to serve that's why it remains an honor for me today to be given the mandates that he has given me by grace and i do not toy with it because the sheer level of gratitude to be trusted with this level of grace it remains ever before me are we together the state of your heart you go and ask the lord every time i go to god in prayer i'm not praying lord more power more anointing more fame more increase thank god for those things but believe me my greatest prayer till today is lord search my heart try my thoughts and find out if there is any wicked way oh david you may never know that there is a murderer in you you see let me tell you how the heart condition works 
when you see God not bless and help certain people don't fight him he knows what he's doing if you saw the little David you would never know that there was a murderer hiding in that boy there are many wrong things in our heart that an opportunity has not yet been created for it to find expression but it does not mean it is not there for instance you never know whether you like women or not to you you say god for me no women may god forbid it how do they do that thing in the name of jesus christ you go and ask david you never knew that you can fight and kill because somebody called you joshua selman instead of apostle joshua selman you didn't know that there was that lust for power and honor and while you are starting god says beware walk on this can i tell you whatever god tells you to walk on don't argue just walk on it whether you understand it or not you never knew that you could kill for money you could tell lies you never knew that you could sit down in front of a herbalist and say i'm tired of this it must work by whether if god is not going to help me if they have what the heaven helps those who you know those kinds of wise sayings that come from frustrations and now you sit down there I know you are laughing but I hope you are learning when your heart condition is wrong when Christ is not the center of your heart no matter what God tells me today about my life I will not argue I will go quickly to roll before him and say Lord I don't want to wait until I see it if you say it you are right let God be true and every man a liar this is a lesson for you to learn because there are many many preachers today who do not have any allowance for god to keep vetting and probing their hearts as at the time you said god i love you you've never stayed in a five-star hotel you've never flown private jet or first class or any kind of priority or superior service so it was just ignorance that was saying i love you it was not really knowledge there was nothing to lay down you were already down what are you laying down but by the time you are in the midst of plenty god lifting and honoring you and helping you can you still go back and say god they may be clapping for me but here is my heart again i'm sharing with you a very deep secret more than just learning principles and principles and principles if your heart condition is wrong you will do every principle right you will be shocked it will still not work your heart condition i am ever aware of this when god begins to lift me or opens any door very quickly i go to him lord your boy is here again with all the human tendencies people clapping calling you king of kings and lord of lords don't say it will enter you go and ask william branham go and ask people who have gone ahead of you you rush to god and say before i destroy myself out of foolishness vet me and god says you are doing well but lost be careful it's already beginning to grow you don't say god god forbid you are rebuking god forbid no pride in the last two weeks it's like pride is already growing deal with it that spirit of competition is already at work in you the moment he comes to you like that rejoice rejoice can i tell you you may have heard it in my teachings you know a man who is a man of the secret place because you will never see any deficiency for a long time you will see this for two months pride is growing one day you will just see that it has gone you will know that the secret place the place where men are changed when you see people continue to grow in certain levels of error for a long time it is because their pride has covered that aspect of them they don't give god allowance to prune it and work on it john 15 the person i love is the one that i prune so that he will bear much fruit you may not like what i'm teaching you this morning but if it's fruitfulness you want in ministry forget that pride of perfectionism Go back to God in sincerity till tomorrow till forever I will never go to God with any sense of perfectionism no we live in a world where we are obsessed to look flawless before men 
you better go before God and roll on the ground and say God please search my heart it's not self-condemnation let people keep calling you whatever they will clap for you the day you crash they will bury you and move forward so if the heart of men, men are wicked they can clap for you and call you all kinds of things let ministry go down you will see the same people who call you king of kings who say crucify him when Benny Hinn was younger in ministry, am I wasting your time? No. When Benny Hinn was younger in ministry, Marilyn Hickney told him something. She said, Benny, if you can find five people who love you sincerely and believe in you, you are about the luckiest man on earth. He laughed and he told her that it was kings that receive him when he goes for crusades. Of course, I'm saying this now with all honor to him and because he has shared it himself. When he had a challenge, you know, in ministry, marriage, and all of that, in 24 hours, half of his partners left, sir. Half the people who are saying we will stand with you and preach the gospel with you. Nobody cared to verify anything. Everybody just went to your tent, O ye Israel. And he stood there broken with bills in debt. It is painful when those who say Hosanna also say crucify him so before you allow the flattery of men to destroy you let me teach you that there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother run away from that celebrity deception and stay with the one who will stay with you no matter what happens this is a message our generation of ministers need I receive over 800 text messages every day and I thank God and I honor the Lord for all of these people I sleep and I wake up to all kinds of commendations but I can tell you I know that there is one and one alone who can accommodate all the versions of me where would I be if you left me now? where would I be if you is someone learning your heart condition that's why God can take another man's prayer request and give to one as a gift because he has found your heart condition so right I pray for myself even as I'm standing here with you may I never get too big that God cannot search my heart and tell me his verdict you see the person who loves you is the one who will open up to you like this because most times when we come as preachers we just patch everything and just know the secret is not just in expertise there are times where your boat is right there are times when you are at the sea where you should catch fish there are times where you have the net but you will still not catch fish it is not an error in your system there is just no fish at that point you to take a relationship with the one who can give fish there are times if your net is torn you won't catch fish but there are times all the principles are correct if there is one secret I want to teach you today about ministry there are a few other principles that are powerful but the greatest of them that I've seen in my life and believe me with all humility I know what I'm saying people call me every time and say apostle you are this you are that how come this results and I say oh dear you do not know that this man who stands before you is the puppet you are seeing there is one who is behind him there are certain things that cannot be done by men is God speaking to someone you need to allow God to vet that pride vet that whatever it is especially our generation of preachers let's be careful we live in a world that is obsessed with being celebrities yes enjoy the honor and whatever blessing that comes with ministry but please learn this about men men are very self-centered if they clap for you they are only clapping for themselves through you you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star 
When I learned this in life, I thank God for all that represents honor that he has given to me. But I have trained myself every day. Sometimes I stand before a mirror and looking at myself, I say, Joshua Selman, you were once a baby in the hand of a woman. Do not let the nation celebrate you out of your secret place. They were not there when God started. They only met you at the corridors of greatness and they don't have enough patience to stay with you stay with the one who started with you when you did not look like it preachers some of you here are frustrating yourself and killing yourself over land and building issue leave that and go back to the secret place go back and say Lord I may not have members I may not have great followership across the globe but one thing I have is you and you are that treasure are you learning Lord what is it about one billion that you cannot give me and he says you are right your heart condition I love you too much to give you one billion what do you mean you love me too much when i gave you 10 million i didn't see you again you disappeared and ran away morning devotion i'm flying business class i have to hurry up and he says just because of 10 million naira no i love you too much to keep you in that state you know when people claim things in church now i'm a man of faith don't get me wrong but when people claim things you know sometimes i just watch with wonder and i say what do you think god is a robot when you read in the bible that his last treasurer betrayed him don't just say god give me money find out what the treasurer did not do because god is still looking for treasurers his last one disappointed him and if you come and say lord i want to be your treasurer make sure you are not judas again can i tell you go and learn all the greek and the hebrew you can learn if your heart condition is wrong you will be surprised how you will know so much and yet doors of ministry will not open go and try to know all the connections of men go and learn the principles go and receive different anointing oils from men of God and pour it at once on your head because of how determined you are to carry the anointing and you will be shocked you will only look like a herbalist nothing absolutely nothing will stay there because your heart condition Please do not forget this. Jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Any man, including Joshua Selman. The heart of man is desperately deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. Please read together if you're a Christian and you can see it. Are you ready? One, two, read. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to what? Not according to his begging. Not according to his desire. According to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Let me tell you sincerely, believers, I have had the honor and the privilege of talking with the fathers of faith in this nation and across a few other nations. I've had the honor of learning wisdom from several people. I can tell you, behind the giant genuine exploits that you see is a heart that is broken, humble, malleable before the God of heaven. When people say great people are proud, I say compared to what? Someone can bring me a cup of water now and based on someone's mindset, this is pride. Why didn't I go and carry it myself? So when people say people are proud, I say based on what standard? You have to look at where the person is standing first. 
you can meet someone washing my clothes now and say it's pride what is it about washing that you... <laughs> ah, believers please go for a retreat use this conference and go it's an advice go for a retreat in that retreat don't put your hand in your pocket lie on the ground flat carry your certificate carry your bible carry your ministry csa document and say lord i hand everything over to you if you do not help me i don't know what tendencies are in my heart carry your business your company whatever it is your accolades and cry before god and he will come to you and say because you have shown me that your heart is right let's go and i'm telling you it will look like you held a charm in one month god can open doors for you in a way that will surprise you i know what i am saying has someone learned anything so whilst you are seated before i just wrap up and touch on the remaining and then we'll pray wherever you are you're going to lay your hand as, on your chest as a point of contact and cry before the god of heaven lord i am not ashamed check my heart you want to kneel down you want to stand please it's, it's a moment of genuine repentance and soul searching cry before the lord vet my tendencies oh god The arm of the Lord is not too short to open up doors or to lift you in business, in politics, in ministry. It is a state of your heart. That circumcision. Someone is praying. Nothing to be ashamed of. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. This I know about God. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind transform me will you take my will come for me to yours to yours oh lord take my secret place 
it is not what you do once in a while is how you live search my heart oh God and try my thoughts see if there is any wicked way in me lead me to the way everlasting in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ praise the name of the Lord please bring out three people for me right now I just saw fire just moving and because of this prayer of brokenness there is an anointing particularly one of them that that grace is an evangelistic dimension but it does not look like it yet because you are still in the place of prayer three of them I'm stretching my hands now the power of God will come on them one of them will even start running please hold them and bring them out here as I share with you the other principles in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I truly cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and lords of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the number seven and I'm seeing a mantle for restoration. It's coming on seven people. Bring, bring them out too. Seven. For one of them, several things have gone wrong in your life and family. You're not directly in ministry, but I'm seeing this anointing. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I speak by the Spirit of God. Please help our mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, help that woman please in the name of Jesus the son of the living God restoration may that mantle come upon you you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with song of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength hallelujah who is that your doom I'm hearing a name Abiodun. Is there someone carrying that name? Abiodun. Abiodun. The Abiodun I'm seeing is wearing a black suit. Is there someone like that? Abiodun. You are wearing a suit. What's your name, sir? 
Just verify first. What's your name, sir? Abiodu. You, you're a member here? No, sir. You came for this meeting. You yes, believe sir. in Jesus? Yes, what sir. do you do? I'm, I'm just working on my own. I'm sir. going to pray for you. You believe that God can lift you? The Lord is bringing restoration to your life. I stretch my hands over you and in the name of Jesus, I command this wicked spirit that has tied you down and tied your destiny down to give way now forever in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead my friend look at me shout jesus as loud as you can i just saw an anointing take that grace now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same again madam the lord is saying i should tell you i don't know who this woman is but in the name of jesus the lord is saying he's restoring the month of april is your month god is bringing strange restoration even by the spirit of god is there someone called caleb i'm hearing a name caleb 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 there is a woman here the name of your son is caleb who is that caleb huh? can, can you help us with the mic oh you came here because of caleb is it technical help? Jesus. Huh? We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. For you are Awesome God, you are I lifted up. Abala shala gadabadi. Mama, please stand up. Are you a member of this church? You can, what's wrong with Caleb? Caleb used to be very, very devoted to God. I sent him to Canada. I don't understand what's happening to his faith. As I speak to you, he has blocked my line. You see, my dear people, hear me. There is no limit. One communication of the prophetic with balance is about to save this woman and save her child right now. Now, but hear me. This is the warning. Because many of us, when God begins to use us like this, back to my prior discussion. I am a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. It is that pride and, and lack of brokenness that stops God from advancing with his grace and gift upon our lives. There is nothing extraordinarily I'm doing here. You see, look at this woman. How can I stand here and come and sit and know that a woman is suffering with a... Now imagine this woman came for a minister's conference. And she believed that she came for her son. How in the world can I know that her son is in Canada? I've never met you. I don't even know who this woman is. Man of God, this is how far God can take you. When you become broken enough. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or prophet or whatever. No. It is how far God is willing to solve the problems of people. Now, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus glorified in this process? Because if this same woman comes with that her son, Caleb, and holds him, that boy is in Canada. Mama is here. But you can see her crying because of the pain. This is what should happen in church. That people should come and know that they met Jesus. Jesus glorified. More than a man of God being glorified. Question, how do you have empty pews under this condition? Mama? In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, you will never forget this conference for what God will do. I release that grace upon you. Out the spirit that is at work in Caleb that will not allow him to serve God. By the rod of a higher priesthood, I decree and declare right now, here at this conference, we declare restoration for Caleb. Hallelujah.
IK. I think your name is IK now, but they call you IK. IK for short. I have just a few minutes. Is there someone like that? IK, where are you? You love Jesus? God is going to use you, but there is a lot of work that God needs to do with you, my friend. Huh? Don't be embarrassed, eh? This is a minister's conference. Our father here too? Your son is IK. No problem, I'll pray with you. That's alright, please just leave them. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? Huh? Ujota. Ujota. No, I mean state of origin. I want to pray for you that everything that does not name the name of Christ, tying down your destiny, it must give way. Daddy, please place your hand on your chest. I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down. High blood pressure. This is BP. Is that true? Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. It's going down now. There is a name above every other name. Look at our father. At this age, this man is crying. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed. Daddy, please do not cry. Honestly, I feel so touched. Someone, please help this man with. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, sir. Standing in faith with the grace upon the man of God, and I declare first for your BP. High blood pressure goes down now. Are we agreeing with this man? It goes down now. And I pray for your son, I.K. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be your desire. Where is he? What does he do? He's working with, he's working at home. He's working with a company. I'm seeing God. That gentleman is going to be a big businessman. You see, yes. I don't know, but I'm seeing the name Onicha. You see, that name Onicha, God is going to connect him to someone within that place. Let him not fight it when it happens. There is a hand of God that has gone before him. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let it be so. In Jesus' name I pray. Please sit down in one minute. Huh? Okay, this gentleman, let me pray for you. You see, you are as good as your friends. You are as born again as your friends. If you are born again and your friends are not very serious, it will eventually affect you. Are we together? I'm speaking in parables. You hear what I'm saying, my friend? Don't be, there's no such thing as we're classmates, we grew up together. You must get to a point in your life where anybody who is not pro kingdom in your life, they must remain at the outer court. You must culture your relationships if you intend to be serious with God. Father, help your son. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that grace rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let that grace rest upon you. I'm hearing the cry of a baby. I'm hearing the cry of a baby. The cry of a baby. Is there someone here who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb? I'm hearing the cry of a baby. This is what I'm hearing in my ears. Look at this. Help her. My God. You will be surprised to see what the God of heaven. Shalina haske de branda gaduzi atalakusia prahastana. All of you who are coming, except if you are standing for someone, but please make sure you are married, otherwise go back to your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. You are trusting God for a baby? Madam, shout Jesus. Jesus. 
my sister look at me lift your hand shout the name Jesus just do what I'm asking you to do In the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that demon my friend look at me this man take that grace in the name of Jesus I correct what the doctors have told you is stopping fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to believe in the power that is in the name of Jesus the Lord will surprise you take your eyes away from the medical report and trust the Lord just believe what I'm asking you to do my sister this lady I'm seeing fire coming on you this is what I'm seeing now and I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare let that demonic thing leave you now I want to pray for all of you because I heard the cry of a baby the power of God will come upon you as I pray for you father every legal access that the devil has over their fruitfulness that will not allow you to enjoy the blessings of fruitfulness right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare release them now 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 release them now now release them now, release them now. in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare to you like Eli spoke over Hannah according to the time of life in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God according to the time of life let there be fruitfulness for you now help this man help this man in the name of Jesus fruitfulness now Your name is to be hallowed. I declare to you, as you have come out, you will come out again. But this time you will not be alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, that woman there, is it for yourself or for someone else? Huh? This woman. For my daughter. What where is she? She's in data state. Mama, I will pray with you, but lay hand on your own stomach. The miracle is for you first. There is something God wants to take out of your stomach. Is that true? Huh? Yes, sir. Have you gone to the hospital for it? Yes, I will pray with you. In the name of Jesus, let her go now. Release Mama now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Even before I pray for your daughter, I'm praying for you. They will not tell you something is growing in your stomach that requires surgery. I command it to go now. Be released right now. And we pray for your daughter. Even as you have stood in for her, let there be supernatural correction right now. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Return to your seat rejoicing. Spare me 10 minutes and we're done. Please sit down. Five requirements for effective ministry. Five requirements for effective ministry. Number one, every ministry, particularly the fivefold now, but it extends every facet of ministry every ministry that will excel in today's world every ministry that will thrive and represent the purposes of God must have these five pillars if they are not there you cannot have fruitful ministry number one a mandate or a message every ministry that must excel must have a mandate and have a ministry a, a message many preachers have messages many preachers have series but you must have a mandate and a message that becomes the dimension of god committed to you your mandate in that universal plan there is a mandate apportioned to you if you are oral robots 
your assignment is to take the healing power of Jesus to the nations if you are in hard bunk your blessed memory your mandate is to bring the healing and the saving grace of Jesus to Africa there must be a mandate that drives your life John 3 16 Jesus himself was speaking to Nicodemus and he said for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have life everlasting very clear very simple most people do not have the message Acts chapter 2 and verse 36 your message is very very powerful because that is where your value comes from can I tell you it is the message that makes the messenger powerful the messenger is not independently powerful he is as powerful as his message therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ simple message in one sentence do you have a mandate and the message every church every pastor every apostle every prophet in as much as generally speaking we have a corporate agenda of revealing and glorifying Jesus but there are dimensions to that call and there has to be a clear definition just help those under the anointing you see this is why you find out that many people are many things according to circumstances the man can stay today and find out that the evangelistic seems to be most marketable and he becomes an evangelist then he finds out that the pandemic has really stopped crusades and quickly switch to prophecies because you can do one on one and then all kinds of things this 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 confusion around the body of Christ is because there is no mandate can I tell you every church including this must have what the Bible calls the things that are most surely believed among us if this is a healing ministry then I expect that the greatest conviction you should have should be along the area of the power of God to heal if it's a ministry that has been mandated to raise people financially as a contribution to the larger picture you should not have members doubting the God who can supply Luke chapter 4 when you Luke chapter 1 when you read from verse 1 to 4 right he was speaking to Theophilus Dr. Luke and he said that the things that are most surely believed among us everybody said the mandate can I tell you every attack on a man of God every attack on a minister is an attack on the message it is not an attack on you help him please the goal of every attack it does not matter in what dimension it comes when Satan attacks you every attack has one singular assignment to discredit the message and the mandate so that your voice will no longer be heard you protect your ministry by protecting the message the Apostle said this is the message we have received from the beginning we were given a message as ye go preach saying go with that message the signs will follow the message the mandate are we blessed your message also defines your unique contribution to the body of Christ everybody cannot be everything no matter how yielded you are you must be able to brand your impact with your message your message is what brands you your impact very quickly number two the second requirement when you sort the issue of your mandate is the vehicle or the strategy that will drive that message the vehicle or the strategy that will drive that message that means is that message going to be driven using the pulpit is it going to use business the geography of your witness can I tell you it's not enough to know your message you must know the vehicle and the strategy that will drive 
that message that's where we talk about the concept of the seven mountains the mountain of religion family politics business education media arts and entertainment these seven mountains they represent the platforms where you can stand upon to make sure that that mandate is heard very important most people have a clear message but they do not understand that until you have a strategy a vehicle in this case now the pulpit the pulpit is the strategy or one of the strategies and the vehicles given to the man of God to communicate that prophetic dimension that God has given him number three very quickly what do you need for effective ministry an organized platform you need an organized platform you need an organized platform it's not enough to know you are sent to business you are sent to the fivefold ministry there has to be an organized platform that brands your impact are we together look at me when you hear Holy Ghost Congress what comes to your mind when you hear Shiloh what comes to your mind when you hear power must change hands what comes to your mind do you ever confuse it because more than the mandate there is an organized platform that brands your impact when you hear coca-cola do you think of uh, what other huh? do you think of Pepsi no they are all watches but when you hear a Rolex watch you don't think of others because they brand themselves when you think Adidas what do you think of you see isn't that interesting that Adidas has nothing to do with football yet when you call Adidas it is football you think about and yet they are a clothing line because they want they knew that their greatest sales will come from that area and so they connected their relevance to football so every time you call Adidas look up please whenever you want to go and buy seasoning most times what do you say you are buying whenever you want to buy toothpaste what do you say you are buying oh so you know 